Hello and welcome to ASEAN Talent. I am your host today. You know, back to 10 to 20 years ago, all the information were published in paper, magazines or newspapers, for example, and of course, books. But when the digital devices like tablet, smartphone and computer come and play a significant role, most of the people have turned to these kinds of technology. They spend most of their time on Facebook and Twitter and spend less time reading books. This is why some countries across the world are launching the reading campaign, including here in Thailand. I really don't want to say this, but a survey shows that Thai students read only eight lines a year on the average. Fortunately, we can still find a girl who really loves reading. And this girl is not only a normal reader, she's also a writer. And I'm sure that you'll be surprised because she is only 17 years old, but she has her own book called The Mermaid Apprentices, which will be translated into over 10 languages. She is now in her room. Now let's go and see her. สวัสดีครับนวปียสวัสดีค่ะ Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Well, what are you doing? Um, I'm organizing my bookshelf. As you can see, I have quite a lot of books, and occasionally my bookshelf gets pretty cluttered. What, what kind of books do you have right um, here? Everything from um, teen romance to fantasy to adventure to up there I have travel books and other non-fiction books. I love to write something that when my readers, because when I read a really good book, I get so drawn into it that the world seems real to me. And now we will talk with her on how she turns from a reader to a talented writer. Well, starting with the first question, when did you start reading? Honestly, I can't remember, but my mom told me that um, when I was young and when she was taking a bath for me, she would have these little cards with mm -hmm. um, like words on them or something when she was trying to teach me how to read and write English. She'd just put like, there'd be like duck, the word duck, and then there would be a picture of a duck on the card and I would play with it when I was like in the bathtub. So I guess you could say I started reading ever since I could pick up like the cards. Mm -hmm. And did you fall in love with uh, reading since that time? I never, I was never the kid who at a super young age read super thick books. I was actually a normal kid who loved reading nonfiction mm -hmm. because I had a phase where I was obsessed with dinosaurs and um, I bought practically all the books I could get my hands on on, on dinosaurs, like picture books, you know, with all the little cute captions. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to admit that the time when I really started reading thick novels was when Harry Potter came out. I see. I really want to know what, what you think that time when, when, when you have to read a really thick book. Yeah, at first the task might seem a bit challenging because I mean like it's so thick you can sleep on it, right? But then um, we read it, part of it in English class and I, I actually found the writing to not be as challenging as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, okay, let's just take it one chapter at a time then. So um, I bought the first one and actually my dad bought the first one. He was um, abroad and then he brought it back and he was like, Pierre, this book will be a bestseller, guaranteed. I'm like, really, Dad? And then it really became a bestseller. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I tried reading it, and then it got really fun. I got really hooked. I was so obsessed with Harry Potter that my copy right now, book one, is tattered. It's to pieces because I read it so many times. I see. Well, back back at that time, yeah. you you write a book in English, right? Yeah. Was it difficult for you at your age um, to read a book in English? To read a book in English, I have to say that I'm pretty proficient in English, I think, and um, my mom tried to um, make me a bilingual, as bilingual a person as possible since I was young. So it was a challenge as to some words I didn't understand, but as a kid, when my mom tried to read books for me, if there were any words that I didn't understand or she thought I wouldn't understand, she would open the dictionary and she would actually write the meaning under the word and underline it so I could actually see the meaning. From all the book you have read so far, what, what advantages have you gained from that? There's so many advantages. I have to say that it's definitely improved my vocabulary because as you encounter new words, sometimes you don't really remember it, but once you read it and it's in a sentence, then you learn it more. It's like you're semantically encoding it. And 
It's definitely helped me with my imagination. I love to, now when I go to places, I love to think of stories or characters in my mind, and mm -hmm. it's definitely helped me to broaden my imagination. How, how do your parents support or encourage you to read books? Do, do, I think they... they encourage me since I was young because when I would come home, from school or whatever, they would be sitting there reading. They wouldn't be watching TV, they'd just be reading either a magazine or a book or anything. So as a kid, I was like, what are those things? You know, they look pretty fun, right? Otherwise, why would my parents be doing it? I don't actually know if they were reading or not, or they might have just been pretending, <laughs> but it definitely got me hooked on books. You know, I, I believe that um, if you teach your kid um, all the habits, um, we will follow her, we will follow your kid uh, until they grow up. Since she, Pia was born, I will have a, a diary for her uh, until I think she is 10 uh, that you know, I quit my diary. I taught her to love writing and you know, reading and drawing. I tried to um, open the world for her. How you turn from the reader to the writer, mm -hmm. when, when is your start? Oh my gosh, um, when I was seven or six, one of those, um, I actually wanted to write a book about mermaids. So I uh, actually thought up this whole swashbuckling adventure, the storyline on my head. And you know, because we live in Thailand, I've lived in Thailand for my whole life. We go to the beach a lot and um, we have a house near the beach and it's just beautiful. So I've always been drawn to the sea. Mm -hmm. So I always had this idea that, you know, I was actually a mermaid. I was secretly a mermaid. And I tried to write a book at that time. It was a picture book um, with the storyline next to it. So I actually drew out and I, I think I have some sketches back when I was young, but you know, I was too young. My language wasn't that good and it didn't work out. But um, yeah, I started again when I was 13. Well, I would like to know what is your inspiration to write the books? I love to write something that when my readers, because when I read a really good book, I get so drawn into it that the world seems real to me. I, I feel like I know the characters and I go into this mood of like, of craziness that I'm so obsessed with the story. So I want readers who read my book to feel exactly the same passion that I feel for those books. As you wrote a book about the, the mermaid, right? Yes. Why did you come up with this idea? Um, to be honest, I think that there are so many there are so many creatures I would love to write about. That's why I called it the Interspecies Trilogy. So in the future, if I ever want to write about other creatures, I can. Mm -hmm. But there's been there have been so many books about witches, wizards, you know, with Harry Potter, um, vampires from Twilight, and um, elves from Lord of the Rings or any other series. So I felt that it was really unfair that no one's been writing about mermaids. I mean, the only like famous mermaid lit piece of literature is The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. But there's not been like a, a huge bestseller that's been to do with mermaids. So I decided, why not? You know, I've always loved mermaids. Right. I can see that to write a fantasy book need a lot, a lot of uh, imagination. Where do they come from? Um, from traveling. Um, ever since I was a kid, my mom would take me traveling a lot. We were very, very avid travelers. And every time I see a new place or a new location, I get so inspired just to bring that location into my book. So I know that lots of people may not get to travel, but if they read my books, they will get to pretend like they're in that place. And it just, it brings everything to life. Oh, not just your imagination that are in uh, this book, but also the facts are also included, right? Yeah. How, how, how did you do the research, all the facts? I mean, some people say that, oh, writing a fantasy novel, it's so easy, you just make stuff up, but you can make things up, but then you have to write according to the rules you made up. Mm -hmm. So when I was creating this place, because I always wanted to write something that's universally applicable. I didn't want to write something that's only American kids can relate to, or only Thai kids can relate to. So I actually created this new place called um, Mondraside, which mm. is kind of based off Hawaii. Because I love Hawaii, how it has so many mixed races. There are Americans who go live there, they are Japanese, and they're the native people. And it's a really mixed place culturally. So I created Mondraside Island, which is um, near Hawaii geographically. And I had to research so much about how this place would seem realistic. Mm -hmm. So I had to research um, its culture. Um, what, it, what does it do for imports and exports? Like I know that um, Wonderside is huge on sugarcane. Like they have a huge sugarcane industry. And I had to research how the winds and waves would affect the island shapes. Like, you know, because the wind comes this way, it erodes the island to form this certain shape. And we learned geography in school. So that actually helped me a lot. And when I was writing about mermaids underwater, like, you know, how do they actually breathe? Do they have gills? Do they breathe their, through their nostrils? You have to research all of that to make it seem realistic enough that that people can actually believe in, in the place that you're creating. You know, not, not just like, okay, yeah, they turn into a mermaid, end of story. How did you find all the information? 
Um, most of the time it was through the internet, but I also ordered um, books on Amazon, especially mm -hmm. on mermaids and mythical creatures, and I re did a lot of research with that. Or sometimes if I had a specific scientific question, I'd ask my teachers, and they were really helpful. So you have read a lot of books about mermaids, right? Yes. Is there any challenges in writing books? Definitely. Number one is writer's block. That is um, when sometimes you just can't write. You, you, don't, you, have, you don't have the imagination, the creativity, or just you don't have the push to write. And it's really difficult to overcome. But I think that with writing, you can't just stop it. You have to like find ways to spark that imagination. So mm -hmm. I do that by watching movies, reading other books, um, by traveling, or by looking at photography. Because I love photography. And when I go to places, I take like photographs and everything. So I look back on that, and then I try to get that, you know, that, that inspiration back into me to write. And apart from um, the other obvious challenges, there's like, you know, like sometimes you feel like you can't do it. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's really hard to make sentences flow beautifully. Sometimes it's really hard to make your characters seem real, not just one dimensional, because I really want readers to be able to relate to um, my characters. I see. And how, how did you overcome those challenges? Just have to keep on trying, you know? And I learned that we can't just control our characters to be what we, what we want them to be. Sometimes they have a life of their own and they just take off and you just got to go with that. I met David Beckham as a kid and I was like, okay, yeah, whatever. I met Owen Colfer and I was just like, I couldn't talk, I couldn't speak. Oh my God, he's mm -hmm. like what I aspire to be. She started writing a book. I told her that it might take you like two, three years. Once you start, you know, you have to, to decide. Once you decided, you cannot give up. 